Hello everyone and welcome back to Mount Moon TCG. Well, by the time this video releases, it should be November 3rd, meaning that Paradox Rift is finally available for you to purchase in stores. So you might be thinking, when you're going out to buy, you know, these new booster pack, booster boxes, etc., you might be wondering, what are the best cards in this set? Well, don't worry about it, because today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what I think are the top 10 most competitive cards from Paradox Rift. We're gonna start with, at number 10, Jirachi. Jirachi has the ability Stellar Veil, where your opponent's basic Pokemon cannot put damage counters onto your Pokemon in play. So this is mainly here at number 10 because this might help stop, you know, those Lost Box decks. You know, Sableye can be a little bit annoying because Sableye places 12 damage counters on your side of the field when it has 10 cards in the Lost Zone. Well, while you have a Jirachi in play, it basically says, oh, Sableye, no, 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 no. None of that garbage, no, you can't do that anymore. So a lot of people are saying that this is not gonna necessarily make Lost Box decks go away, maybe hinder them a little bit. Anyhow, the attack on Jirachi is not bad either. For one energy, you look for two energy from your deck, put them into your hand. Kinda meh, but Jirachi's mainly here for the ability at number 10. In at number nine, we have Professor Sada's Vitality. Professor Sada's Vitality says, choose two of your ancient Pokemon. Then, for each one you choose, search your discard pile for a basic energy card and attach them to each one of your ancient Pokemon. Then draw three cards. So Professor Sada's Vitality might be really good for some of these ancient Pokemon decks, but it's gonna be kind of hard to tell if ancient Pokemon decks are gonna be relevant in the upcoming format. We might talk about one of them later on in this video, so stay tuned. But yeah, I think Professor Sada deserves to be here at number, at number nine. Pretty decent supporter, can help accelerate some energy, draw a few cards. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it does sound a little bit better than Gardenia's Vigor, I, I'll tell you that much. But for now, Professor Sada's Vitality is here at number nine. Next up, at number eight, we have Professor Toro's Scenario. Now, Professor Toro's Scenario states that you can pick up any Pokemon you have in play. You gotta discard all the, you know, tools and energy attached to it, while you put that card back into your hand. So this sounds like AZ, because it is AZ. Um, this is a supporter card that, you know, it's, it's basically Super Scoop Up Net, but you don't flip a coin and it's a supporter. Yep, so if you have a, you know, a Pokemon V, Pokemon EX, V Max, V Star in play that's about to get knocked out during your opponent's next turn, you can just say, guess what, buddy? You don't get two prizes or three prizes. I'm gonna pick up that Pokemon with Professor Toro Scenario and you gotta find some other target for you to win the game. So I think basically on the fact that this can you know, stop your opponent from taking some of those cheeky prizes later in the game. And you can pick up, say, you know, a Luminion or some other support Pokemon that you don't need anymore. Put it back up in your hand, maybe use it later. Uh, Professor Toro could be a very, very good card. So for that reason, I put Professor Toro's scenario, say that five times fast, I keep screwing it up every time. That's why the card belongs here at number eight. Next up at number seven, we have Golden Go EX. Now, Golden Go EX has an ability that states, once during your turn, you may draw a card. However, if Golden Go is in your active spot, you may draw two cards. Kind of a neat ability, but I think the main focus of this card is the attack. It does 50 times the amount of energy that you discard from your hand. So that's kind of a neat attack. So if you have, let's say, for example, six energy cards in hand, you discard them and you're doing 300 damage, 50 for each for each energy you discard. And of course we have cards like, you know, superior energy retrieval, energy retrieval. You can just put those energy cards back into your hand and attack with gold and go, you know, next turn. 
not too shabby. And it's only for one metal energy. I mean, what's not to like about that? Um, this deck could see a little bit of play here and there. I'm not necessarily sure, but the potential to one-shot some of these big Pokemon, like Charizard RDX, I think can give Golden Go a reason to be here at number seven. Next up at number six, we have Technical Machine De-Evolution. Now this is a tool card that you can attach to any Pokemon and you give that Pokemon this attack. What this Pokemon card says is when it's attached to a Pokemon, they can use the attack in this card. For one colorless energy, you de-evolve all of your opponent's Pokemon and put the highest stage evolution into their hand. This sounds really good. And also remember at the end of your, at, when you use this attack or at the end of the turn, when this card's attached, discard it, but whatever. This can be really good, especially in say, you know, those pesky lost box decks, you know, that like to spread damage counters all over your side of the field. So if you have like, say a Charizard Pidgeot deck that have like, you know, seven or eight damage counters on each of them, your opponent can just have this Pokemon dev, uh, technical machine de-evolution attached to it, de-evolve all of your Pokemon, and essentially take like three or four KOs because they have like 70 or 80 damage on them, take a couple of knockouts, and then you're kind of stuck with some, you know, stage two Pokemon in your hand that you don't know how to evolve. So that can be very pesky. Also, it's just pesky in general, even if you don't have damage counters on. Because a lot of decks, a lot of stage two decks are playing rare candy. Now, if you've used up two or three rare candy to evolve, let's say your Max Caliber, your Pidgeot, your Charizard, etc. You, and if you don't have a stage one in your, in your hand ready to go or in your deck at all, this can be very awkward because now you have to find either the last rare candy or you just might be stuck and need a different attacker to help win the game. So I think for the reason that this could really screw up your opponent's field, it's, I think, pretty easy to see why Technical Machine De-Evolution is here at number six. On the opposite end of the spectrum, at number five, we have Technical Machine Evolution. It's a tool card as well that you attach to any of your Pokemon in play. They get this attack, discard it at the end of your turn. Uh, but this one just says, choose two of your bench Pokemon and evolve them. Oh yeah, this can be very, very good for, say, your Gardevoir deck. Because turn one, going second, you'll do your Mew shenanigans and attach this tool to it and evolve two of your Curlias, uh, evolve two of your Ralts into Curlias on the end of your first turn. Then you can just use those Curlias start of your next turn to, you know, discard some energy, draw some more cards get your Gardevoir up without even needing rare candy. I mean, that sounds pretty darn good for stage two decks. I mean, it even works for Charizard decks, but Charmeleon doesn't have a cool ability like Curlia, so this might work better for Gardevoir decks, but it should still work nonetheless. Even Bax Calibre decks might take advantage of this tool card. And I almost forgot, we still have supporter cards like Arvin in the format. And there's also a stadium that helps get tool cards. I, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but there's ways to get tool cards pretty quick. So that way you can attach the tool and then search for evolution Pokemon, evolve them, and hey, you, you got a stage two, turn two without rare candy. That sounds pretty cool to me. And that's why Technical Machine Evolution is here at number five. Next up at number four, we have Counter Catcher. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Counter Catcher is back. It is a reprint from the Sun and Moon era, which states you can only play this card when you're behind on prizes. And essentially, it's a boss's order as an item card. And you know, half the games you're behind on prizes anyhow, so it's it's a free boss's order essentially. You, you custom catch her up, you know, that annoying Pokemon on the bench that's giving you fits. And then it can still use other supporters like Iono to maybe mess around with your opponent's hand. And that is why Countercatcher is here at number four. Next up at number three, we have Iron Hands EX. Iron Hands EX is an electric Pokemon. Uh, the first attack for three energy does 160. 
you know what, whatever. That's not the attack we're really excited about here. The attack, simply called Amp You Very Much, for one lightning and three colorless energy, does 120 damage. But if you take a knockout with this attack, you take one extra prize card. You see where I'm going with this. If you're going against, say, a Lost Box deck, if you knock out a, you know, a puny little Sableye or a Cramorant or a Comfy, it's essentially two prizes when you use Amp You Very Much. That's pretty powerful. You can essentially beat Lost Box decks in three turns. That's that's ludicrous. It's it's really, really good. Now, you might be thinking that this card might be really good in on decks. I mean, it might. I mean, makes sense. Four energy, it's a lightning Pokemon. Makes sense. Uh, but in Japan, it's seeing a lot of play with Chin Pao Bax Caliber decks. So it's given some people some, you know, good old fashioned vibes of Blastoise, Keldeo, Black Hero. So, you know, anything that reminds me of that deck makes this card very good in my book. Because, you know, it's three colorless energy. You can just use the back caliber to put three water energy on and just attach lightning for turn. And there's a card that'll help with this deck in the next spot. But yeah, Iron Hands can take extra prizes. I think that's good enough reason to put it here at number three. Coming in next at number two is a card that could possibly help the last entrant get really good. It's Earthen Vessel. Earthen Vessel is a item card that states, you must discard a card from your hand to play this card. If you do, search your deck for two basic energy cards and put them into your hand. This card sounds very similar to Professor's Letter, but Professor's Letter, you didn't have to discard a card to use it, so... I mean, you gotta kind of, you know, the card was a little bit too good back then, so you kind of have to, you know, you know, put a little caveat as to use this card, but it's still a very good card nonetheless. This is the card I was talking about that could help the Chin Pao Bax Caliber Iron Hands deck because you search for a water and a lightning, attach the lightning for turn, and use the Excalibur to accelerate the water energy. And you know, maybe take some extra prizes on Sableye and Cramorants, which I talked about in number three. But this is not just only good in Excalibur decks. This could be very good in Gardevoir decks to get two psychic energy, and to, you know, to discard them with the Curlias and put them back on with the Gardevoirs and stuff like that. Uh, this could be, this could make grass Pokemon relevant because you look for the two grass energy, you play the Gardenia's Vigor to attach them right away, draw some cards. Um, this could help out a lot of decks. So, yeah, it's a very, very powerful card. And... I think for the reason that this can help accelerate so much energy and to help so many decks get that energy into play, I think Earthen Vessel arguably could be number one. But there is a card that I slightly like a little bit more than Earthen Vessel. Don't get me wrong, Earthen Vessel is very great. Should arguably be number one. But it's here at number two because you can always, you know, do some cool energy shenanigans. So Earthen Vessel's here at number two. I could have easily done a top 15, but you know, I think 10 cards is enough. But my number one pick for the best card in Paradox Rift is Roaring Moon EX. It's a darkness Pokemon. And you know, I like Darkrai. That's all I talked about on this channel, basically. So, how is this card good and why could it be good in Dark Ray decks? Besides, you know, the fact that you can play cards like Dark Patch and there's a Professor Sada's, you know, vit um, Vitality that I talked about a little bit earlier. Those cards are going to help this card out a lot. So both attacks cost two Dark and a Colorless Energy. The second attack does 100 damage and does 120 more. If there's a Stadium card in play, discard the Stadium, yada, yada, yada. The first attack I'm very excited about. You simply knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. You gotta put 200 damage on this Pokemon, 
but you knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. Let me rephrase this. If your opponent has a, let's say, a Pokemon VMAX in play, or a Charizard EX in play, something that's really hard to knock out, Roaring Moon just goes, get out of here, I'm going to take my prizes whether you like it or not. Yeah, three energy, you're taking a knockout. To me, this sounds insane, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. Say you're the first person that can attack during the game. You take two prize cards. Okay, you have four prize cards remaining. Now, obviously, your opponent's going to knock out the Roaring Moon. I mean, there's only like 30 HP to knock, to knock out, whatever. Unless they got the Ancient Boost Energy Capsule, then it's 60 more HP. So it's a little bit harder to knock out. But nonetheless, they take two prize cards. Cool. There's cards like Dark Patch, Professor Sada, that you can use to help, you know, bring that energy back onto a fresh new Roaring Moon. You bring that Roaring Moon up, you take two more prize cards because your opponent's playing a mainly two prize deck. You knock it out, two prize cards left. They come up, they knock out the Roaring Moon. You got another Roaring Moon set up, you knock it out. Cool, bim, bam, boom, three attacks. It's over, done. The game is over. To me, that just sounds very powerful. And the fact that we have cards, like I said, we have Professor Sada. We have Dark Patch. There's the Dark Ride that can help get those Dark Patches back with the V-Star ability to re-bring that energy into play. You have Earth and Vessel to find, you know, dark energy cards. You have, there's energy switch in the format. You have the mole traces that can get darkness energy back. Energy switching from the mole trace onto the dark moon. There's ways to make dark moon work. And that's why I'm really excited about this card. It, I think this could be a phenomenal card if played in the correct deck. So I think it's very easy to see why I'm really excited for this card and why I put it here at number one. But hey, not all of you can agree with me. Some of you might be very angry as why I didn't put Iron Hands in at number one, which it does deserve a mention. It could be a number one. I think the top three you can put easily into number one, but there's a lot of great cards in this set, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that's the biggest reason why I'm very excited for Paradox Rift. So let me know, are you excited for Paradox Rift? What card are you very looking forward to pulling from your very first pack? And let me know what your top 10 cards from Paradox Rift are in the comment section down below. Don't forget, it comes out November 3rd, which I think this video should be coming out on. But anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe, and join us for some awesome perks right here on Mount Moon TCG. Don't worry, buddy. Help is on the way. Soon you will be a tier one deck. Let's hope so.